I got you. And when we're weak, God makes us stronger. And, uh, and uh, what was that? Oh, yeah, so he also said that when you fall into your weaknesses or, like, Start get distracted by your weakness, <laughs> that, uh, that you allow the devil to bind you and then blind you. So pretty much when that happens, when you focus on your weakness, you allow the devil to blind you from what you're actually called to do and your actual purpose in God. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So bind you and blind you. Give, give a hand clap for that. Amen. Go ahead, preacher. Very good. Go ahead, preacher. Who wants to go next? Okay. Uh, I came prepared. I wrote my stuff down. So um, let me get to it real quick. Anybody live in it? Go ahead. <laughs> um, for me, the first speaker really spoke to me. Um, he was like, God may take you on a path that's different from your own, but in the end, it will ultimately be greater. And uh, for me, I used to, well, I still do. I talk a lot, and I always had, like, I have ADD, so like I will always like have plans, but I will procrastinate in them. So like just growing up and maturing in Christ and just showing the path that He had, like I always like them. Howard and Leon, um, quick story. Howard and Leon uh, were doing dual enrollment, so my father got the idea. Well, it'll be great for my son to do dual enrollment, which in my mind I was like, well, uh, nah, dual enrollment isn't dual enrollment isn't for everybody. Uh, so, but funny thing is, um, junior year of high school, I was, I'm, I'm a senior this year, so junior year of high school, um, the decision came up for me to do dual enrollment and finish high school early. And the thing is, I didn't want to be at North Cobb any longer than I had to. So I was accepted for dual enrollment, but it took, it took some time. I had to go on a journey, and it took some time for me to get accepted. And now that I'm accepted, none of my classes will actually be at North Cobb. I'll take all classes on the campus so just that just so it's a greater he took me on a journey but it's the end result is greater than what I could have done in myself and what I could have did myself so that's the first point and the second um knowing who you are and knowing what you are and the thing that spoke to me was uh I am a child of God and we say it constantly here at church but it's just like it's repetition you just say it you never really get the full meaning of it until like it just hits you. So like for me it was uplifting because it was so many people there and to see everyone else like raising their hands and stuff like that, like you can't I realize I can't be looking for everybody else to get my salvation and to get what I need from God from every from looking side to side. I have to look up and knowing who I am will work in that way because as a having ADD and talking too much, kids pick on you, kids say stuff, and you always have to have a quick reaction. And now that I know who I am and what I am, I don't. It's okay to talk too much, but at a certain point in time, you have to know like when kids start saying stuff, you give it to God. You know who you are. You don't have to worry about what they're saying or what he's saying or what he's doing or what he's doing. I can look up and know that I worship the Almighty God and He has me and I. And Amen. That's just pretty much it. Give God some praise for that. Y'all want to skip? Y'all skip William. Let William go. Oh. You ready, William? No. Oh, I, okay. I, 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 I'll just get it over with. Um, <laughs> I, no, well, um, <laughs> I really, I, um, it was a really fun experience. That it was my uh, second year going to the conference. Um, I especially like staying in the hotel room in Andy Minio and. Uh, all the humor that the people put into their messages. Um, I think the, the best message um, at the conference was actually the last one. Um, Christine Kane, she spoke about um, how uh, you have a purpose in life and you are made for a purpose and the devil will try to shame you um, because um, you weren't meant to feel shame. But in Genesis, she was talking about how um, when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the tree. Um, they felt shame and they covered themselves with fig leaves. And so she was like, that's what the devil uses to attack you. He uses the same things over and over again, just in different packaging, recycling it. So um, at the same time, while she was talking about purpose and how um, it doesn't matter um, what the devil's saying, she was also talking about uh, biblical malpractice, how in this generation, um, 
uh, you know, they're saying things, certain things are okay, like it's okay to uh, uh, marry who you want, it's okay to choose your gender, it's okay to, to do stuff like that, when really uh, we should be looking at the Bible and not letting society tell us what to do. So yeah, that's, I think that was the best one out of it. Amen. Great job, Will. He's saying he wants it. Go and take it with him. I'm going to get my seat and just watch. All right. So uh, what I got out of it was uh, my personal favorite was uh, Chad Beach because he talked about Samson and he talked about how Samson was destined for greatness, but his weakness uh, allowed him to fall because he thought that, you know, I was just, since I'm destined, I don't really like need to worry about any, my, any of my weaknesses, but it, it ended up hurting him in the end but also how he got redemption for, um, for, uh, fall, from falling. He uh, pretty much just praised God for what he has done in his life, and from there he just got his redemption. And I, I look at that in my life just from like, every time I fall and when I get back up, just to look to praise him every time so that I won't like get down on myself, that I'll know like that I got it. So just from like when I'm, um, in seventh grade, when I fractured my ankle from playing basketball, now my ankle's good. I could hoop, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, just like when I slacked off junior year in school, I mean, it wasn't like really bad, but I didn't do what I could do. And just seeing how senior year I bounced back and I got a 4.0, so Come just on. seeing it from there. And also Jensen Franklin, uh, when he was talking about don't let the, cry, the rock cry out in your place. So pretty much I saw that as like just uh, whenever you're like in a hard situation, don't look down on yourself. Just look at what God has done in your life and use that to motivate you to be successful in the situation that you're in right now. So yeah, that's what I got. Amen. You ready, Maisha? Come on. Um, the one that spoke to me the most was on the morning of the, was it the third day? Right when we left and we came back, okay. the last speaker that I saw, was when he started talking about how, when he started talking about how um, you get distracted from all these things like what's binding and blinding. You get distracted by all these things. That one spoke to me personally because a lot of times, especially my hobbies and stuff, I spend a lot more time with that than I do with God. Like I'll spend like hours working on a project, but then I don't spend, spend as much time with like reading God's word, understanding what he means and applying it. And that spoke to me the most. Amen. Amen. So I'll, I think two speakers spoke to me the most. Um, the first one was Ben Prescott, I thought. He spoke about um, speaking at a secular concert, and he didn't know he was speaking at a secular concert until he got there. So when he got there, he was uncomfortable because he saw all these secular people, and he knew he'd have to get up after the show. So it spoke to me when he said, you have to be able to get out of your comfort zone because you have to share the truth even if it's not popular. And Can I help you a little bit? He was invited to a concert. If you imagine an all secular concert, and, and he was set, and these are all sinners drinking, getting high, and everything. And we was told at the end, I want you to share the gospel, the guy that was over the concert. And there were no Christians in there, but God called him to the darkness, and he had been praying, Lord, I want to reach souls. And then God allowed this to happen. And he was just talking about something. We'll pray, and we need to get out of our comfort zone. Take over, Alexis. Great job. And the next person was Christine Kane. She talked about how if a doctor gave you a wrong diagnosis, even though he knew it was something else because he didn't want you to feel bad, it would be medical malpractice. And in the same way, you can't have religious malpractice where you refuse to tell someone the truth just because it makes them upset. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Well, my favorite, I think, was Christine Kane because she talked about reading your Bible and how you can find your identity in the Bible. Pretty much. 
Keep the mic in front of you. If you don't read the Bible and if you don't know who you are, then you're gonna tr you can't be yourself because if you try to be yourself, then um, I guess you won't know how to be yourself because you don't know who you are. So, Amen. You're gonna keep trying to find who you are in the world. Amen. Amen. So knowing who you are in the Word, so you can know your identity. So if you can bring that to me, go ahead. Come on. Yeah, that now it's her time. Go ahead. Um, the speaker that spoke to me the most, I think, was uh, Christine Kane, because she talked about um, your purpose and who you are in Christ, and um, if you know. Uh, she said, like, if you know who you are in Christ, um, nobody else can tell you what you are or what you aren't. Mm. So that's Amen. Give God some praise for that. Very good. Very poignant. That's at the ASAP. Um, well, I just I had an amazing time. I was so glad to have Solomon and Eliana with me um, for their first forward conference. They enjoyed it a lot, and, and especially Andy Minio. They were dancing, and they were getting... So they were, they were getting so excited with the music and stuff. Um, but loving the preaching, loving the experience. Um, you know, for me, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm pretty analytical and sometimes skeptical when it comes to um, events, uh, especially religious events. And so sometimes when it's mainstream, I'm a little skeptical at, you know, let's hear what they have to say and let's find out how they live. Um, but I was blown away because I saw a lot of the people from the movement of Hillsong from Australia, and this is the first time I've actually heard them, you know, and when you hear their stories and you hear them preaching and you see them living out the gospel, it just says, says to me, wow, praise God, because I love it when the Lord blows me away with either it could be a small, tiny group somewhere in the middle of nowhere, or it could be a big, large mega church. When you see the truth in both places, you're like, praise God, because yeah. the kingdom of God is so diverse, so big, so unexplainable, you can't put it in a box. Yeah. Um, and so I was excited because, uh, you know, just having anal being analytical and just trying to break it all down and say, wow, no, this is the presence of God. And I was just refreshed, um, very refreshed. And it was right on time. And I, and I was expecting to be refreshed, but I just was a little skeptical about some of the stuff. And every time I was blown away, Christine Kane, Jensen Franklin, and, and my dad used to work for him. Um, and so we knew their family and stuff, but it was just a blessing to be refreshed. And so personally, I was impacted by that in, in the overall scheme of things, but also just some of the messages um, that I needed to hear, like from Joel and, uh, and what he had to say about going through painful things, um, like just traumatic stuff that he had to deal with as a kid and um, going through life, but realizing it was really a setup, that God was turning something that was very painful and hard and he was using it for his for the glory of God now he's pastoring in you know Hillsong New York City and stuff like that but his impact is great but he's standing there in all humility just sharing what God's done for him and giving all the glory to Christ so I was encouraged definitely encouraged and um so thanks so much for inviting us Pastor Howard amen praise God I want to go sit down y'all can sit down in the front row those that have gone already Rest of y'all, y'all can walk up on stage. Go ahead. Great job. Um, it was a lot of fun, and um, my favorite person was Andy Minio, and like I really enjoyed doing the sign language thing, and all that stuff. Um, and uh, what, was, what was your sign language you learned? Um, how to say love in sign language, yeah. which is this. Yeah. So. Great job, Zion. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed that too, actually, Zion. So yes, thank you for mentioning that. Um, I enjoyed that he talked about how, Andy Minio, that is, talked about how he had been, he, he, his sister um, was born deaf, and um, his older sister, and he was at an event for um, his nephew, his sister's son, and everybody at the table was speaking sign language. 
and he felt really left out because he didn't know any sign language, even though his sister was deaf, he had never taken the opportunity to learn any sign language at all. And so he, he at first he was feeling kind of salty, like, okay, what? Come on, y'all gonna just leave me out like this? And then he said that he flashed back to a time when he was clowning around with all his friends and his sister, who had no idea what was going on, was probably feeling just as left out. And he said he realized just how selfish he was um, that he hadn't even taken the time to try to include her in his hearing world and so on and so forth. So he said that the Lord gave him a glimpse for that. And then he went on to make a, a music video all in sign language dedicated to his sister and so forth, fast forward. But so that's what Zion was alluding to. Um, and he said, so I'm gonna teach y'all a little bit of sign language. And so, you know, he had the I love you symbol up. But um, one thing that I really um, love too is when we were standing out in line, not that I like standing in line, but when we were standing out in line, I really enjoyed seeing the diversity because I love when at different events there are there is a diverse group especially christian events because that's how heaven is going to look yeah. and so i saw korean churches i saw you know um in, i saw indians like the last night because i was like oh where'd they come from i didn't see them the other night i mean indians like india not native americans um so indians i mean you know caucasians australians you know just people from all over the world um, in terms of nationality. And I thought, yay, this is the body of Christ. This is what heaven looks like. So that was the one thing. The other thing was, I was just impacted really by the overall theme of the conference. Because I feel like, for me, sometimes, you know, the older I get and so on and so forth, I really sort of just abandon what it is that I want to do. Or I abandon all you know, um, I guess my dreams and my things, and I just start, you know, kind of like pushing other people, you know, forward, whether it be, my, you know, my husband, our kids, or just whatever, and other people's, um, and other people even in my classes and stuff like that. So, but, you know, one of the speakers, and I believe it was the, the Australian gentleman who's um, Jensen Franklin's, um, Ben Prescott, and he was just talking about how, you know, it's time to dream again. It's time to start dreaming again. And that really resonated with me because I don't really think about like, you know, what are my dreams and things like that on a regular basis. But I really, you know, need to ask myself that question. Like, you know, if I'm not dreaming something and if I'm not, you know, dreaming something, then there's really no expectation that God is going to really do anything with me, you know, and I know that I'm called, I know that I'm chosen. I know that God has a purpose and a plan for my life, you know, but I, for me, I think, you know, once I got married and started to have my kids and stuff like that, it almost felt like, you know, my purpose was always wrapped up in that and not so much as an individual. And so just reminding myself, one, to dream again, reminding myself, two, um, which was the theme of the conference, really, that God is good, that God is working all things together for your good, and that if you believe that God is good, then you'll obey what he says, regardless of what it seems, or regardless of what you feel like you can and can't do in your own strength. And so I believe that was what Christine Kane shared. But that was what I got in a nutshell um, from the whole conference, and that was what was most impactful to me, so. Good job, Nicole. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> um, for me, um, I think, you know, even as I was standing back there and I was thinking about everybody was sharing, um, the thing that I think each speaker hit on was the call. And how, you know, from, from the first one, um, uh, what was his name? Um, S S S Joel Houston, yes. Joel Houston talking about, you know, how his life, you know, the pain in his life, you know, was going to be used to, to uh, make people, uh, make a better story for God, for people to hear through him. And then, you know, you got through, I mean, if you go through each one, each speaker dealt with the call. And one of the speakers, I don't remember which one it was, said that, that um, the devil is attacking your call. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of them, well, at least I know three of them, talked about how they had attacks when they were children and how those attacks were the devil coming against the call on their lives. And, you know, it's not about us. It's really not. It's about what God wants to do through us and who God wants to impact through us. So that theme was all throughout 
the, the, the Bible, I mean, sorry, th throughout the, the conference, and each speaker hit on it. Um, Jensen talked about, you know, um, uh, you know, not letting a rock crowd in your place. And one of the things he said was that, you know, you need to be a person that worships, otherwise you're not going to last long. Mm -hmm. And, you know, looking back at how, you know, the rocks signified the, you know, the um, pastor said, you know, we overcome by the blood of the lamb by the word of our testimony. Well, that's what the rocks were. You know, we overcome by the blood of the lamb by the word of the testimony. The testimonies are what God is doing in us. The testimony is the call that God is putting in us through our lives. Every single person that is living has got something that you've got to go through. The Bible, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Yes. But take heart, I have overcome. And, what, and then you even take that to Revelations. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. Take heart, I have overcome the world. I mean, there's nobody on this earth that isn't going to go through something. But the difference between the Christian and the non-Christian is the Christian can look back and say, I see Jesus was here. I see Jesus was here. I see Jesus was here. And now I'm here. I can look back. And that's one of, even one of the things the speaker said, looking at the rearview mirror and being thankful for where God has brought you from. So, I mean, it was very good. Just, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I typically don't like conferences. I just, that's just me and my personality. But I, I was appreciative for the reminder that there's a call of God on my life, even if I don't feel like in the position where I am right now that I'm doing anything, there's something that's going to come out of this for the glory of God. But it's not about me. It's about me fulfilling the purpose for which God put me on the earth. Amen. That was very good, Richard. Well, what I got of it was um, Chad's Veach message on um, if you can't get over it, you always stay under it. And I was very close friends with um, this girl, I think it was last year, junior year. And after that, we kind of fell out. And I was stuck. Um, I couldn't get over that for a little bit. And after I got under it, I had all these blessings. And it was just a lot better. And, you know, looking back now, I was at first I was like, like, why did that happen, God? Like, this is... Like, we were just so close, and it was, it was crazy. But, like, now that I see that, I'm like, you know, God, I really needed that. I need that to happen. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was um, uh, there's power in what you flee from, and then there's power in what you cling to. Mm -hmm. And it's just all about yeah. your surroundings, who, you're, who you surround yourself with. I have so much better friends now, and I'm just more into the word and so much closer to God and how he talked about how you need to trust God even though you don't know what's going to happen during trials and tribulations. Awesome, awesome, Ari. Very good, very good. Um, this is our first forward uh, conference and it literally blew me away and I just want to thank Tecla because she was on me, on me, on me. She had to call me like three or four <laughs> times for me to get the tickets because I'm so busy. So thank you for your persistence because it was incredible. We unfortunately were only there for one day. I Praise wish we God could, for the one day. <laughs> Praise God for the one day, but I wish we could have made the entire conference. We will be there in the, for the entirety next year for sure. But um, the, the thing that spoke to me or the speaker that spoke to me the most was definitely Christine Kane. We keep on hearing her name over and over again. Yeah. She was so incredible so dynamic her story was amazing the things that she had come through but i kind of had to agree with what ariana was saying and the importance of knowing who you are in christ and she said knowing the word so be if you don't have the word in you, the enemy is going to come and try to define who you are. So it's so important that we know who we are and we have the word to be able to push out the lies that the enemy tries to put into our minds yeah. to um, just try to confuse us. And then like, they, like the Bible said, the enemy is here to, to steal, kill, and destroy, destroy us. And another thing Christine Kane said that I like, she, she came from a very difficult background and she was talking about facts versus the truth and she said it was a fact that um you know when i was born my mother didn't want me it was a fact when i was born i didn't even have a name and there was some other fact i can't remember what it was but she said there's a tr huh she wasn't oh she was on oh, yeah she was as a fact that they were telling her she was unqualified to do what she was doing but there's a truth that oversees those facts yeah. and that is the word and what, what does god say who you are so it was an amazing conference, and as I said, we will be there for the entirety next year. Yay. Amen. Y'all got that on video, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just messing with you, bye. What I got out of this was um, Reggie, when he said, 
was you tied to. That was my favorite part. And all the rest of them, they, they were awesome. And I got, I love everything. I almost cried that day. That last day, I almost cried because it just got into my heart. Praise God. I mean, uh, she said she really got Reggie Dab when he, when he preached on what are you tied to. It really impacted her. And God really just, he just touched her heart. He talked about not tying yourself to death, but tying yourself to life and your decision makings and all the little things that you do. Amen. And now that specific day, we had about at least, I'm just going to a quick head count of a, a thousand kids that came down that were suicidal. And they just spoke life into them and got them the necessary help that they needed. So it just, you know, it was just amazing. So many, I don't know if you know, the, the, the suicide rate, rate amongst teens has skyrocketed in the last, last 10 years. And so just to see them in the midst of them laughing and joking and giving a, a fun message, reach out and bring it round circle so that those people that were hurting in that arena get healing it was just real powerful. To watch the Holy Spirit do that through Reggie Dab. So, yeah, thank you for sharing. Give her a hand clap. Great job. Great job. Taylor. The thing that mostly got to me is, is that, well, for me, I need to get closer to God. I need to focus. Like, most of the time, I have a whole bunch of Bibles in my room, but if I'm bored, I won't do any. I'll, try, I'll make sure I find something to do so I don't read the Bible. I don't need it. I don't like like want to pray or make sure I don't I don't like praying or reading the Bible and that's mostly supposed to me is that I need to get closer to God because the focus on Him mostly and to make sure I'm around the right people because this year wasn't my greatest year and yeah. Amen. Amen. So you got you got you gonna be making some new decisions, right? Say it in the mic on, on TV, go on, on the camera. Say, it. I'm gonna make some new decisions. I'm gonna make some new decisions. Some new people. Some new people. New places. New places. And new things. New things. Amen. We're in agreement with that. Amen. Yeah. Great yeah. job, Taylor. Give me a hug. Yeah. Great job, yeah. Nisa. Yeah. Great job. She was a leader there, one of the leaders in the room. Wow. Yeah. Go ahead, Mama. Well, I want to say that. Uh, I have this. Mm hmm. I will gladly. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> All right. So I want to say that just, I guess, having this been our third or fourth year, each year, I want to say the greatest thing that impacts me is just seeing the light bulbs go off in all of our youth, just hearing them each year, what they come back and come away with, and even the parents, to see the inward transformation taking place. So to me, that's the greatest impact um, and how God also speaks to me. I know this is a uh, conference that's geared towards middle and high schoolers, but I can never say that I've ever not come away and not say, man, that was really for me too, <laughs> in so many ways that I've gotten out of it. So just out of the um, conference time this year, I just, again, um, as was stated, saw a running theme. And I think to each of us, it sort of will hit us in different dynamic ways. But I was just looking at how they dealt from the call, the time you're called, to the decision you make, to the process that we go through, to the commission. And so the one that stuck out to me initially with the call was Reggie Dabbs. And he was talking about what are you tied to and how our decisions can literally tie us to life or death. And the decisions start out small. It can be like that raindrop that falls and it has two paths that it can go. It can go down the, uh, the river, the Colorado River out to the Pacific, or it can go down the Mississippi River out to the Gulf of Mexico, out to the Atlantic and how those little minuscule things that we choose to do every day can have great repercussions of life or death. So choose wisely. So from that first night, I saw the choice and how out of that, a lot of the students were impacted. That was once again, as was mentioned here, suicidal, come down That's to the right. altar to Mention want to get uh, saved and to, or to get that sense of hope back Thank in their time. lives because they did not really either, first of all, make that choice for themselves personally, or even after they did make that choice for Christ, how they were not making wise decisions in their walk. Come and so that ministered even to me, because even as we've been in this thing for some time, 
We can still make small little decisions that will take us away, farther away from the purpose of God or closer. If we want to stay in a lukewarm position or comfort zone position, those little decisions day to day can lead us back to death. Or we can move closer in our, 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 our walk to faith, every day awakening our faith. And so that was a great impact. And then also uh, Jensen Franklin just that next night just coming behind with that message of hope and freedom and how we're called to be free and walk free in Christ and not letting the world beat us down or tell us who we are differently than what we're called to be. And just seeing that, 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 that revival birthed in our hearts again through his message. And then Chad Beach really impacted me because he talked about the marathon that he was to run with his uh, mother and um, how it was so um, disheartening when he had, first of all, uh, well, not really disheartening. He wanted to run with his mother, but he saw that middle portion of the race. It was so hard because all he could hear was his breath and his panting and how that is with us. So it's a lot of rah-rah at the beginning line and at the finish line, but in the middle of our walk, how we can just hear only ourselves trying to make it through that race. And that spoke of that process, that part in our walk as Christians, where we have to press when we don't feel anything, when our legs are tired, when our feet want to give out, when we're in pain, and when it seems like we're all alone. And so that really, I felt, encouraged youth and adults alike for that press, after the rah-rah, after that call, after that decision, you got to press even when you don't feel anything. And so that was really impactful to me. And then Ben Prescott coming behind, talking about how he did have to minister to uh, unsaved, and he was fearful. And at first, because he's like, I've been praying to be used, but now that God set me up to be speaking to all these unsaved people, I'm fearful of what God you're wanting to use me. I'm unqualified. And so just even God showing, even in the midst of you feeling unprepared and you feeling like you don't have what it takes to reach somebody else, God has already given everything right in your hands. He's already given it right in your hands. And so uh, just even through his message, that was really that part of that process that ministered to me and I know it ministered to you. And then Christina came uh, as she ministered as well on being un unnamed, unwanted, and unqualified. And her having her birth certificate, having a letter that depicted how her mom uh, handling of the baby after she was first born, how she didn't have any sense of interest or nurture towards the baby, her feeling that sense of unwantedness, and a letter from somebody who had advised her later in life that she should probably not even be wanting to go and reach out with, uh, to other people because she was so abused, other youth. Yeah, she was abused as a child, molested and all, m numerous times. Yes. Um, and so, and not even knowing if she was conceived out of rape or molestation or what have you. So all of these different levels of rejection, but yet despite all of those facts and factors, how God through his word superseded all of that. And so that dealt with even no matter where you came from or what you've gone through, God can still use you and he can still qualify you because he's called you, he's allowed you to go through this process so that your mess in the middle can become your message. Yeah. And so all of that, just how it just tied him from beginning to end, just really was a blessing to me. And the bottom line if I, out of it all is don't let the devil steal your praise. Praise God from the beginning in the middle and in the end. Keep your praise and know who you are and whose you are in him. So that in a nutshell to me was how the synergy of the, the conference ministered and it really was a blessing to me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Amen. Holly, great job, Pastor T. <laughs> Extend your hand to our, our, our youth right quick. Yes. Father, we thank you for all of our youth. Yes. God, even Mosey on the stage, we got each yes. and every one and those that weren't able to come, that, that they're hearing this. God, uh, we are that are hearing. God, we pray that you just bless them. Now lay your hands on yourself. Lord, bless my heart and bless yes. my ears yes. to bring transformation through their experience. Yes. In, Jesus. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' 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 name. Amen and amen. Amen. Give God amen. some praise. Amen. Thank